I think I want to just sit, uh, briefly say ways in which the current revenue system keeps us locked into the old economy. So that's one reason why we should care about the revenue system in this conversation about the new economy. Then the question is, what would a revenue system look like that actually helped us move toward a new economy, and what are some of the actual policy proposals? And, uh, you know, I like to, if, if you look at our current tax system, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it, it keeps us locked into the old paradigm. Uh, so an example being, we, we, we privilege income from wealth over income from work. We, through our capital gain system, you know, the wealthiest capital gains revenue comes, is taxed at 15% from wealth, income from wealth, income from work is taxed at 35% at the top of the tax rate. That creates all kinds of distortions, ways in which people manipulate and play games to reclassify their income as income from investments, not work. Um, and, and another example being the, uh, the, the subsidies, the tax, huge tax subsidies that go to the mature oil extractive industries and resource extraction as opposed to uh, transitioning and investing in a new economy. Third example is sort of the, the way in which in the last decade the, the, the corporate tax system has privileged uh, global companies over domestic Main Street businesses. Uh, so you have a whole offshore tax system where you have, you know, 200 huge companies that pay zero or very little corporate income tax because they're able to move their money around and use the offshore system uh, and the secrecy jurisdictions to hide their money and pretend that their profits are being made in other places. So those are all, you know, and, and, and that creates, that last one creates a huge unlevel playing field. And we, again, when we talk about uh, what Michael and David talked about, uh, main, supporting the Main Street economy, you don't get a better example of how do you destroy the Main Street economy uh, better than privilege a global company that can game its taxes to zero where a domestic company is continuing to pay its taxes. Um, so you have a, you know, unfortunately we've probably spent two decades destroying Main Street businesses in all these sectors uh, by subsidizing global companies that, that, that are gaming their taxes. So, the, 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 so then what does a system look like? And the first thing is just to say, look, taxes are not value neutral. There is no such thing as a value neutral tax system. It's a reflection of the values, the fact that the powerful and wealthy corporations and, and, and wealth holders, the wealthy 1%, have a tax system that reflects their worldview, and as David Corton says, their story, about wealth doesn't mean uh, it's a good idea. We should completely turn that on its head. So, and there's an old conventional wisdom, which is you should tax the bads. Uh, going back to Arthur Oaken at, uh, at Brookings Institution, you know, if you, you, there is no such thing as a value neutral tax system. So you should tax the things that are harmful in a society. So the, the old notion of sin taxes comes from you tax tobacco, you tax alcohol. Uh, these days, you tax junk food, you tax sodas, all because there's a nexus between those, the consumption of those products and social harms. So you're offsetting social harms by taxing the bads. And by raising the costs of the bads, you signal to the marketplace that, you, you're, you're, that those are costly. Those are costly items to the society. And that you need to... So, uh, so what are the new bads? What are the bads in today's economy? And I would argue that the three big bads are extreme inequality, pollution the and the destruction of nature, and speculation, uh, which Sarah has talked about. Uh, so the extreme inequalities of wealth, which create these huge distortions, which we already talked about why they're bad, 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 why, why they matter, are one of the bads. We should be taxing the bads in the form of concentrations of wealth. We should be taxing the destruction of nature and all the things that, that and, and raise the cost <laughs> of extracting and, and, and uh, pollution. And we should put a cost on speculation. So in each case, not only are we interested in raising revenue that can be used to invest in the healthy economy, in the real economy, in the new economy, but we're also using taxes as a way to signal behavior changes. Um, so Sarah, I think, spoke to the 
whole area of speculation. What would it look like to tax the bads of financial speculation? But you could also look at uh, commodity speculation. Uh, like in the commodities, the, 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 the rapid transfer, you know, the, the, the growth in uh, food speculation, oil speculation, the speculation that happened with, with, uh, with resources in the real economy that had huge costs in terms of global hunger and the like. So, but in the area of extreme inequality, uh, you know, there's certain policies that should be much more robust. We should have a much more progressive inheritance tax and estate tax, which, again, taxes the concentration of wealth as it transfers from one generation to the other. Uh, we have a pretty weak inheritance tax now. It taxes uh, wealth above $5 million at about a 35% rate, and that and that the rate is the same whether you have five million or, or fifty billion, we should have a progressive estate tax where the higher the concentration of wealth, the higher the percentage that society recaptures. We should uh, ha look into the whole idea of a net worth tax or wealth tax uh, that some European countries have. Uh, we should tax incomes above a certain level with at much higher rates. So should we should introduce new top tax rates. Uh, again, in 1955, there were 16 tax rates above the equivalent of where, we, where our current tax rate ends right now. Right now, the top tax rate is 35 percent, and uh, on income's over 350,000. In 1955, there were 16 additional rates above and beyond uh, what we currently have. Uh, so you can have a ladder of progressive taxes, tax rates. So those are some of the policies, I think, that would address on the individual side. Uh, Clearly dealing with the offshore system, shutting it down, removing the incentives that corporations have to move their money around, creating a level playing field with domestic businesses would be also be a huge incentive that would address the inequality between the 1% the of corporate global businesses and the 99% of small businesses. On nature, pollution, I mean, I look across the table at, at Daphne, my colleague Daphne. She's been beating the drum on the whole issue of a carbon tax. That's probably the single most important intervention, you know, if we could flip one switch today, you know, a uh, phasing in a carbon tax uh, would be a huge intervention. It would raise substantial revenue, but more important, it would raise the cost of dumping carbon into the atmosphere and uh, change the market signals. It would, it would dramatically shift all kinds of market signals. It would, it would be a huge intervention. Similarly, you could tax other types of pollutants in the economy, things that nitrates that go into our water supplies or, or the like. So um, looking at ways at the point of production to tax uh, pollution or extraction, raising the cost of consumption. Um, and then I think, uh, and Warren Buffett and people like that have talked about progressive uh, luxury taxes. You could have sales taxes that are focused on uh, the 1%. The consumption of the 1% is, is enormous. The, uh, the amount of natural resources that are destroyed by the consumption habits of the richest on the planet are huge. <clears throat> so we tax that as a bad. That's a bad. Uh, again, private jets, uh, you know, luxury yachts. I mean, there are certain <laughs> kinds of products that just we should tax the heck out of. We should make them so costly, again, to reflect their real social costs. We, as taxpayers, subsidize private jet travel in a, in a dozen different ways. Uh, so it's not just about focusing on, on one type of consumption. It's really saying the social costs of that destruction in nature should, should be tied to the product. If you want to have a private jet, you should pay way more <laughs> than you pay now, right? Simple example. So those are examples of taxing the bad. So... Um, I think, I think that, you know, there again. I think Sarah said it well. There, the, the discussion is a lot about where's the money going to come from, and how are we going to use the money. But there's a way in which we could design the rules of the tax system that just sort of signal to the larger market and move us more quickly uh, to a transition to a new economy. Um, so that should be part of I think of our of our, our more public program.